Hello everybody, today we will be going over how to create the game Battleships in Python. Before we get started, let's go ahead and take a look at this website that shows one version of the game. So in Battleships, you essentially place down a couple of ships in different positions on the board. You can rotate them to any degree, um, no diagonals allowed, just up, down, left, right. And when we go ahead and start, you're going to have this grid that's A through N, 1 through 14, and essentially, you're trying to shoot down the hidden battleships on the screen. So you place a shot, and it'll tell you whether or not that you hit anything, or if you just hit water. Battleships can be a two-player game or one-player game. Our version of it is going to be a single-player game, where the computer will randomly generate the positions of the ships, and we will be trying to find all the ships within a certain amount of bullets. So let's go over how it works. And the prereqs. This is a intermediate to advanced tutorial, so you should have a decent understanding of loops, uh, for loops and while loops, strings, arrays, 2D arrays, global variables, and methods. So how it works. In our version of Battleship, we will have a 10 by 10 grid with eight ships of variable lengths randomly placed about. You have 50 bullets to take down the ships that are placed down. You can choose a row or column, such as A3, to indicate where to shoot. That would be A, on the top here and three on the bottom there. And then for every shot that hits or miss, we'll have an indication on the grid where it'll pop up as some symbol in our legend that'll display whether or not we just hit water or whether or not we hit a ship. The ships cannot be placed diagonally, so when it's randomly generated, you will know that it'll be in one of the four directions, left, right, up, or down. This is useful to know, so if you do manage to hit a ship, you know that the next shot that you should try should be in one of those four directions. If all ships are unearthed before using up all the bullets, you win, else you lose. And for our legend, the period will represent water or an empty space. Capital O will represent part of a ship. Uh, capital X will represent part of a ship that was hit with a bullet. And the hashtag will just represent water that was hit with a bullet. So you basically missed that shot. We have a couple global variables over here that we'll be using throughout the game. So grid just represents the 2D array for the battleships where it'll be placed down. The grid size for our game is a 10 by 10 grid. We have eight ships, 50 bullets. Game over will be a boolean that's false. Number of ships sunk. So this will be really useful because you need to know when a ship is sunk. And that's how you win the game essentially when all ships are sunk. So as you play, you'll have a display that tells you how many ships you have left to find. And if you shoot, let's say, four bullets in a row that are just facing right, and you manage to hit all parts of a ship, you'll be notified saying, like, that was the end of the ship, and, like, you have one ship that was sunk. And the game is over when this is equal to this. Ship positions is another 2D array. It's just going to keep track of every time we create a ship, we're going to keep track of the starting row, ending row, starting column, and ending column, and we'll be using this later to find out whether or not you sunk a ship every time you shoot a bullet. Alphabet, this is just going to be a constant that we use when we're displaying the rows of the grid, so we don't have to type all those letters out. Now, these are the placeholder methods for the battleship's code. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight methods that we'll be implementing, one more than the Hangman tutorial before, but Battleships is much more complicated than Hangman. So to get started, our validate grid and place ship method. Placing a ship in the grid is actually quite complex. There's multiple steps to it, but the most base level step will be given a starting row, ending row, starting column, and ending column. We need to check to see if it is safe to place a ship there. So on this board, for instance, if I start here and my length is going to be four, so one, two, three, four, we need to check to see if all of those four spots are water or if there was a ship that was already placed there before. And if it's safe, we're going to go ahead and place down the ship. If it's not, this method will return false and we'll try again in a different position. Try to place ship on grid. This basically just checks for given a direction. It'll try calling the method above to place a ship amongst one of the four directions, up, down, left, or right. Creating grid is where the actual creation of our grid happens, and it won't be 15 by 15, it'll be 10 by 10. So it'll randomly place down the ships using the two methods above. 
print grid, this just prints out a nice little grid for us using the rows A through J and columns 0 through 9. Accept the valid bullet placement. This will be our a method that takes in the input where we will type the row and column, something like C3 or B6, and it's going to validate that the letter that we type for the row is a valid row, and the column that we type 0 through 9 will be a valid number and check for ship sunk. This checks to see every time we shoot a bullet if the entire ship has been found for that bullet position. So let's say we shoot this bullet here and the ship was this long. It checks to see whether or not if all of those positions were already hit or if some of the ship is remaining. And if all of the parts of the ship have been hit, then our global variable for number of ships sunk will go up by one. And shoot bullet. So shoot bullet calls our input method from before where we accept the bullet placement. We get our row and our column. And based on that row and column, we're going to check to see if the spot where they shot the bullet was empty, whether or not it had a ship. And based on those two things, we'll update our other variables, such as the bullets left and the grid UI. So it'll show that either you hit empty water, so it'll replace it with a hashtag, or you hit a ship, so it'll replace it with a capital X. Finally, check for game over. Uh, based on the number of bullets left versus the number of ships sunk, you'll see whether or not you won or you lost every round. And the main method is just our game loop that ties all of the methods together. So at this point, you can pause this video and download this empty stub, which is in the link in the description in the links below. You'll be able to find the GitHub repo that has the code for the empty and complete solution. Go ahead and give it a try yourself. And once you're done with that, let's head over to the solution. So starting over in the first method, validate grid and place ship, you can see that we start by checking if all the valid, if all the positions are valid basically. And all this is doing, this loop right here, is checking to see if for the row or direction that we gave is all the spots on the ship the water or a period, which is our empty position according to our legend over here. Now, if all of the positions are empty, that means we're good to go, valid will never become false. But if we run into something that is not a period, for instance, this could be an X, an O, or a hashtag, valid is false, and we're just going to break out of the loop. Now, if it was valid, so we didn't run into anything, we can create a ship, and we're going to append the starting row, ending row, starting column, ending column, to our ship's positions. This keeps track of all of the positions where we place the ship in the game. And this is used for knowing if the entire ship has been sunk. And for those positions where we're going to create the ship, we just change the grid to become um, the capital O to represent a part of a ship instead of the period. So we're just overwriting our 2D grid with a capital O for all the parts that the ship has been placed in. And this method is now done. So we go to where it was called, which is try to place a ship on the grid. And here you can see this is a bit of clever manipulation that we want to do to save down on some code. We keep track of the four variables and we start them to be row, row plus one, column, column plus one. So if you're familiar with loops, you would know that if you loop from a starting position to the starting position plus one, it's going to run one time. And that's all this is doing. We're setting the defaults to be that for every row, you're only going to be checking that row itself. And for every column, you're only going to be checking that column. Now, based on the direction is where we actually do some manipulation. So if the direction is left, first we got to do our check to see if the column minus length is less than zero. That means you're trying to go out of the grid here. So for instance, if my starting position was here and I say I want to generate a ship facing left two directions, we would be out of the grid. That wouldn't be allowed. So this is our basic input validation. We return false. That position is not valid. Now, if it's OK, we set our starting column to the column minus length plus one. And all this does is if I'm starting, let's say here, the length of the ship will be one. So we're going to subtract one. But because we only want the length to be one, we have to add back one more to just balance it out. There's just some offset logic right there. So all the directions are pretty similar. Like if it's right, we're doing the same check. If the column plus length is greater than or equal to the grid size, you're out of the grid again, return false. Your ending column is column plus length. If it's up, another check, and we set the starting row. If it's down, we set the ending row. 
Once those four variables have been calculated based on the direction, we call the helper method from above, validate grid and place ship, and it checks if that entire, let's say, row or column is valid. And if it is, it places the ship. We return true. Now, create grid is where those two methods above are being used. So first, we're just this method right here, random.seed time.time. All this does is tell Python that we want to make our randomness based on whenever you run the program. So if you run it multiple times in a row, the random sequences should give you some different values. And this is just a trick you should always use when you're implementing random in Python. And for the imports, just like hangman, import random, import time. So we start off by creating our rows and columns, which are just equal to our grid size. In this case, we could have just used um, grid size instead of rows and columns, but if you want to modify the code later, it's better to have it like this so you can make the size of the rows different than the size of the columns. Now, we need to create our 2D array. So to create our 2D array, we do for R and range of rows, which would be 10 in this case, we create an empty array. And for column and range of columns, which is 10 again, we're just appending a period to uh, this row. And then after the row is filled with 10 periods, we append it to our grid. So we have 10 by 10. And for our number of ships placed, this is just going to be our local variable. We start at zero. Our ship positions is an empty array. The reason that this starts at zero is because we're going to try to randomly place ships along the grid. And if the position was not valid, we're just going to keep placing until all the positions have been filled. This could seem bad at first because theoretically you could just keep running the code over and over and over and it would never find a valid position. But because our grid is so much larger than the number of ships we're trying to place down, it's extremely unlikely for that to happen. So while the number of ships placed does not equal the number of ships, random row, random column, and our direction, and our ship size, all these four variables are just randomized so we can place a ship in, anywhere amongst the grid. And we call our method above, we try to place the ship. If it returned true, the ship was successfully placed, so it goes up by one. That is all we're doing to create our grid. Notice again, every time you're using a global variable in a method, you should put the word global and the variable name there. So this allows you to read and write safely to the global version of that variable instead of a local version. So that was a lot to take in, but those are the first three methods of battleships that all that does is allowing us to create our grid and place our ships on the grid. So now let's go into printing our grid. To print our grid, we have our alphabet being used now. And what this does here is we're just checking the, we're slicing the alphabet. So it starts at zero and it goes up to the length of the grid basically. So if our 10 by 10 grid, that would be A through J right there. If your grid um, rows were longer, it would dynamically keep going up to whatever size you want. So if we did three, it would only be A through C. And if you did more, it could go up to N. So we have our alphabet for our row set up. Notice debug mode is true. That's because um, as we print our 2D array, it's our basic uh, four row and range grid, four column and range for that many uh, columns in that row. If it's a ship in debug mode, you want to see that it is a ship. So we're gonna print out the O so we can easily hit the ships and test it. But for a player that's actually playing the game, it would be false because when you're actually playing the game, you don't want to see the ships, they should be hidden. So while it's iterating through the 2D array, if it's a ship part that is meant to be seen, you're going to print out a period instead. And over here at the beginning, we print out the alphabet part, which would be A or B or C. And at the end, we print out all the numbers at the bottom, which will be one through nine. Now for accept valid bullet placement, this is our input sanitization method, really, where we're just going to take in the user's um, row and column so they could enter A3. And we want to make sure that it's all valid. So we have a series of checks that we run here. If the length is less than zero or greater than two, that means that they didn't enter A3. They might have entered a couple of letters or a couple of numbers or not enough letters or numbers. So we print an error message and we say continue. For those of you that are unfamiliar with continue, 
what it does is it essentially pretends that the rest of the code underneath it does not exist and it resets back to the beginning of the loop. So it's very useful for error handling where after this print statement, we want to restart the loop. So it jumps back to here and it'll continue going through. So after this first one, we know that we have exactly two things. We split it up into our row and our column by indexing our string. We check if the row is alpha, um, this is an alphabet, so it has to be A through Z. And we check if the column is not a number zero through, or zero through nine, basically. If any of those things are false, then that means that we're gonna print out another error, continue again. After that, we check our index of the row in the alphabet. So this would be our alphabet finding whatever index the letter is. So A in our alphabet would be index zero, B would be index one, and so on. Once we take that index, we make sure that it's between, it's greater than negative one and it's less than grid size. So that would be A through J in this case. And we do the same for column, make sure that it's between, uh, it's greater than negative one and it's less than grid size. So that's zero through nine. If all of our checks pass, now we check to see whether or not they've already shot a bullet there. So if the spot they're trying to place a bullet on is a hashtag or an X, that means they already shot the empty water there or they already shot the ship there. So they have to choose somewhere else. If it's a period or a capital O, that means it's a valid placement because the bullet's never been shot there. So they're either hitting water or they're hitting a ship. It's a valid. So we set is valid placement to true. We don't need anything else. The loop will break out on the next run. And we're just going to be returning our row and our column together. When you return multiple variables from a method, it automatically packs it into a tuple for you. So when you read this, you have to make sure that you destructure it properly. Uh, we'll get to that in a moment. But the next method, check for ship sunk. So this is whenever you actually do finish shooting your bullet into the grid, it's going to check to see whether or not an entire ship has been sunk. And the way it does that is by going through the position and our ship positions that we added at the very beginning of the code. All it does is it iterates your grid over the sh each ship, ship positions and uh, based on wherever your bullet was last shot. So first, if the placement of your bullet, the row and column, is in between the ship positions row and column, so that's the ship that you shot, now we have to check if all of that ship is sunk. So for that starting row through ending row, starting column, ending column, we iterate over the grid and we check to see if they're not all X's. Because if they're all X's, that means that everything is shot, you return true, that ship is sunk. But if they're not all X's, um, then you return false because some parts of the ship have not been shot yet. Now coming to shoot bullet, this is where we did that input sanitization. And remember, we returned a row and column from this method over here. So we, when we read it, we also have to read it back as row comma column. This is automatically destructuring the tuple out of that. And from here, we're just printing um, whether or not you shot something or you didn't shoot something. So if the place where you shot it was a period, so you missed, nothing was shot, you just shot water, and we're setting it to this, the hashtag to symbolize that water was shot. If it was a capital O, you hit a ship, you mark it as X, you check it for the ship to be sunk, which we did over here. If that was true, we print a ship was completely sunk, we update our number of ships sunk, we print it out, we subtract one from our bullets left regardless of if you hit something or not. And finally, we check for game over. In game over, it's very simple. If the number of ships equals the number of ships sunk, you won. If the bullets left is less than or equal to zero, you ran out of bullets and you lost. And our main method just ties the whole game together by putting it in a classic game loop where we first start by printing welcome to battleships. You have 50 bullets, take down eight ships. We call our create grid method to randomly generate our ships. And while game over is false, every round we print the grid. We print the number of ships remaining, the number of bullets remaining. We shoot our bullet, which starts the whole process of taking in the input for row column, checking to see if it's valid, shooting the bullet, and then checking to see if all the ships are sunk. We check for game over, and that's it. Let's go ahead and run this and see how it works. So over here you can see, since debug mode is true right now, you can see all the ship placements. So these are where all the ships have been placed on the sh grid. And if I do A3 or A4, yeah. Now we can see that 
You missed. No ship was shot. At that position, A3, it replaces the period with a hashtag. Now if I go to A4, you hit. A ship was shot. This first part of our ship has been shot, and I think this is the ship, so let's try to sink that ship. A5, another hit, A6. You hit, a ship was completely sunk. So if we sink all of our ships, it's game over, we win. And if you guys want to modify some of this to do similar testings, you can easily change the grid size, or let's change the number of ships to two, and let's run this again to easily see the win screen. So now that the number of ships have been changed to two, we can see that there is a ship on the going right from E0 to E2, and then G2 to G4. So let me go ahead and sync both of these. Oh, my bad. E0, E1, E2. So you hit, a ship was completely sunk. Next one will be G2, G3, and G4 and the ship was completely sunk you won because now everything has been hit so that's it for battleships i hope you guys like this tutorial check the description for all the code below and leave any comments if you have any questions battleship is much more complex than hangman was but i think it's really important to take the time to understand battleships because it is a very good example of how 2d arrays work how to iterate over things in a grid and those are all very valuable concepts that will help you guys later on. So let me know if you have any questions and have a great day.